It's the Q. Here is your host, Jeff Crick. Hi, Jeff Rick here with theCUBE. We are on the ground at the Santa Clara Convention Center at the Open Daylight Summit, the second Open Daylight Summit that they've had going on. About 800 people here talking about networking, next generation networking, and uh, so we're excited to come down, let you know what's going on. So our first guest tonight is Bala Thekadath. I get that right? Yes. Awesome, yes. Director of Product Marketing from Ericsson. Welcome. Thank you. So you, uh, you got to kick off one of the big keynotes today. So for the folks that didn't make the keynote, tell us a little bit about what you guys were talking about at the keynote. So I was today part of the keynote with Intel. So it was, um, Intel was talking about how SDN is moving into mainstream deployment, how 2015 is going to be the year of SDN deployments today. And what I was there to, uh, as a proof point of was the collaboration that the industry is having in taking SDN to being a mainstream technology. And uh, you know, a lot of these works, people who are working on these technologies, they have point solutions. But we are all coming together here in a collaborative way just to make sure that whatever we are doing is not a point solution. It's a broader uh, framework into which we plug this solution so that it can be taken into service provider networks, which you know are not heterogeneous equipment. It's uh, not homogeneous equipment. Right. It's, it's, a, it's a range of heterogeneous equipment, multi-vendor, multi-technology, multi-generational. So we want to make sure we're creating solutions that are applicable to a broad range of uh, service provider scenarios. And that's the only way to accelerate deployment of SGN into this technology, right. into, into the networks. So one of the, um, the key ideas was, yes, SGN is going, uh, that I, I touched about, uh, further to what John was talking about is, uh, SDN is a big part of the operator transformation, but it is a part of a larger journey that includes SDN, NFE, cloud, the OSS transformation. And when we think about getting SDN as a mainstream technology into service provider networks, we need to think about all the other pieces of the infrastructure that need to fall into place to make right. it really, really into the network, to, be, to make it a mainstream part of the the operator mindset, you know, to the point that they don't think about SD and it just is there, you know, right. taken for granted. So, you know, there's a lot of work, collaborative work that is happening in the layers below and above the SDN control, in the network infrastructure and the data center uh, infrastructure layer with uh, virtual network function um, communities like the OPNFV and even one-on-one -on -one collaboration that uh, vendors like us have with Intel and other partners. Then there's the management and the orchestration layer where actually these consumable services are created across a hybrid infrastructure. There's parts of the network that are already transformed. There are part of the network where we are getting these technologies in. But when we create, when operators create consumable services that they want to sell eventually, it has to be a service that runs across an entire hybrid infrastructure. Right. And then there's a lot of work that is going on in user groups and advisory panels on actually taking this and monetizing it, to talk about use cases that are being enabled, to see the impact of this on end user experience. So, you know, in order to, to get SDN to its rightful place in the network, we need to make sure that all these pieces of the puzzle fall into place. Right. And typically when operators are making these decisions on uh, any of these layers of technology, they're thinking about four key things, business priorities. You know, What are their business priorities with that technology? Is it re reducing their OPEX? Is it increasing their revenue? Is it being more relevant to the customers that they serve? Then they think about you know, what is the infrastructure life cycle of that layer in their network? You know, Is it something that they've just put in and they don't want to uproot and throw away? Is it something that is near the end of their life cycle? There are operational processes, you know, they think about how flexible are their processes to change, how easy for them to change and go to a new model. The organizational capacity and considerations on people competence and people culture. So, you know, my take was that when we in the SDN community here in Open Daylight community make any decisions um, for the broader community, we should always keep in mind these four key factors that our customers are looking at it. And right. if we always keep that in mind and look at that, uh, the place of SDN in the broader network infrastructure, then we will make it much easier for those guys to take the decision to push SDN into the network. So how does it work having uh, Open Daylight as, a, as a, a platform really to collaborate on some of these things in an open source framework versus kind of everybody building their own, building their own? I think that, the, like I said, the greatest advantage we see with uh, being part of a community like ODL is, is the, 
the reduction in time to taking some of these things to market in a much broader way. You know, we could create point solutions, but then if you want to take that solution and apply it across um, service providers throughout the globe, you know, uh, all the way from the ranges of AT&T to somebody uh, setting up a small telecom network in a small city somewhere in, in a different part of the world. If you want to create solutions that are relevant to this broad range of uh, scales and capabilities, then I think we need to have uh, the only way to take it uh, forward in a much faster way. To get that innovation in a, in a much broader way is to have a collaborative community development. So, you know, that's why uh, our own, we, we actually had a solu SDN solution before Open Daylight kicked off and then we stopped that effort and we have put all our effort now into uh, just creating products on top of the Open Daylight uh, project. And then talk about the promise of SDN. Talk, you know, we always talk about a lot, we had a lot of shows, right? Software's eating the world, software defined everything, but it seems like the network was kind of the lagging last layer. I mean, what type of opportunities do you guys see to really transform what networking be with SDN? So that's the, uh, the real promise of SDN is that it is transforming the network into a programmable and uh, automated infrastructure, right? I mean, there's a lot that has been done already in the world of cloud and virtualization where we could now spin up applications much faster. And uh, the real promise of NFV was that, oh, we'll be able to spin up applications much faster and we'll be able to move it around to where you need it so that you are really optimizing your uh, resources. But that really happens only if the underlying infrastructure which we're using to move these functions are equally agile and programmable. Right. Otherwise, that falls short, right? I mean, you could, uh, you could have an intent to move an application closer to a customer, but if the connectivity infrastructure is not there to, able, to be able to do that in real time, then you kind of, you know, it, it's, uh, the promise of that agility is only as fast as its weakest link, right? right and right. today it is the network. The, the goal of SGN, the promise of SGN is to make that network much more programmable in real time. So that you know, when you select the type of services you need, you can also define and say, what is the connectivity requirements I have, and that gets automated and activated in real time. And it, it's not just applications. Once you have that infrastructure, it can be given to, to consumers and enterprises to on a self-service portal. Right, and, right. And, and the more power you give to people and consumers to choose their own um, choice of network requirements or network services or connectivity requirements, the much more empowered they are, the better user experience they have, and you know, it, will be a, it will be a great user experience. Right, right, and to really support this kind of developer-centric world, right, because it's all about the developers. We're at DockerCon, and you want to be able to develop the application on your laptop, roll it into AWS, do a little test and dev, roll it back into my own data center, and then potentially roll it out all over the place. So Absolutely. you need software-defined infrastructure to do that. Absolutely. Awesome, so what's kind of the next big thing uh, that you're working on if we come back here next year? What will, we, uh, what will you have accomplished from this year? What's the priorities? Two things, getting this actually, you know, like John said, this is now the year when we are starting to move this into the network, right? So we have proven the fact that it works in a limited environment. So next year we hope to be here and talk about wider deployments for SDN. Well, it's actually in the network in a much scalable way and people are actually making money off this technology in the operator world. Awesome. Well, Bala, thanks for uh, taking a few minutes to stop by. Congratulations on the keynote. Thank you. I'm Jeff Frick. We are on the ground here at Santa Clara Convention Center at Open Daylight. You're watching theCUBE. Thanks for watching.